If you're one of the many people who are switching from Filmora to DaVinci Resolve in the wake of Filmora's interesting decisions lately, then you might be a little confused about where to start. Don't worry, I've got you covered. Let's talk about it. If you're new to the channel, first of all, welcome. My name's Jay and I make videos about DaVinci Resolve as well as all of the tips, techniques, and tools you need to become a better video editor. So if that's something that interests you, stick around and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment if you enjoy this video. Okay, let's get started. The first thing you want to do after installing DaVinci Resolve is to set up your project database. See, unlike most NLEs where you save your projects as project files that you can place anywhere you want on your computer, DaVinci Resolve uses what's called a project database or project library. Now, by default, DaVinci Resolve creates a library on the main hard drive of your computer, which is fine, but reading and writing to a project file that's on the same hard drive as DaVinci Resolve can be a bit bit taxing on that drive and make DaVinci Resolve a little sluggish. Plus that main hard drive fills up fast, so we don't need to help it get there any faster, right? To fix this, you'll want to create a project library on either a secondary hard drive within your computer or get a large external hard drive to store your library on. Personally, I have a 10 terabyte external hard drive from G Drive that works great. I'll link that below. To create a new project library, just open up DaVinci Resolve, then in the project manager, click on add project library. Give that library a name, click on browse, and choose an empty folder folder on the drive of your choice and click select folder. Then back in the project manager, click create. Wait a couple seconds and the new project library will appear in the project manager. Oh, and here's a little bonus tip. You can create folders in your project library just like you would on your desktop or file explorer for a little added organization. Moving on, my next tip is to create your default project settings. I don't know about you, but pretty much all of my YouTube videos use the same project settings. So creating a preset for those settings saves me a ton of time when I'm beginning a new project. To change your project settings, you can either go to File, Project Settings, or just click the little gear in the bottom right of your screen. Then change the resolution, frame rate, and any other settings that you need to. Now, fair warning, there are a lot more project settings in DaVinci Resolve than there are in Filmora, and it can get a little confusing. So to start off, here are the three main settings you need to be concerned with at the bare minimum. First, change your resolution to whatever you need it to be. Personally, I use 3840 by 2160 Ultra HD, but you can use whatever you want. Then change your frame rate. Personally, I use 24 frames per second, but as long as you match the frame rate in your project to the frame rate of your camera, you'll be good to go. Finally, head to the Fairlight tab in Project Settings and change your target loudness to minus 14 LUF. So that's the loudness that YouTube wants, and doing this will set all of your audio meters to target that. There are other project settings for color management and all sorts of stuff, but these three will get you started off on the right foot. Once you have them set, simply go click on the three dots in the upper right of your project settings and select Set Current Settings as Default Preset. Now, every time you open and resolve, you'll have those settings dialed in and ready to go. The next thing you're going to want to do is import any LUTs that you've been using to make your videos. DaVinci Resolve does have a bunch of LUTs already preloaded and ready to go, but most of them are what are called utility LUTs, which convert log footage to Rec. 709. And the ones that aren't are film emulation LUTs. If you want creative or look LUTs, you'll need to bring those in yourself. To do this, head to your project settings, click on color management, and then down in the lookup tables section. That's what LUT stands for, by the way, lookup table, just in case you didn't know. Click on open LUT folder. This will open up the folder on your computer where all of the built-in DaVinci Resolve LUTs are stored. Simply copy and paste your look LUTs into this folder, close the file explorer, and click update list. Once that's done, you should be able to head over to the color page, click on LUTs in the upper left of your screen, and see the LUTs that you imported. If you can't, closing and restarting DaVinci Resolve Resolve should fix that problem. And then tip 3B, I guess, would be to activate any audio plugins that you have installed on your computer. Unlike Filmora, DaVinci Resolve completely supports VST plugins and has a fully functional digital audio workstation or DAW built in. So you can do all of your audio editing right in Resolve and get professional quality. 
To activate audio plugins, click on DaVinci Resolve in the top left of your screen and select Preferences. Then click on Audio Plugins and in the Available Plugins section, select all of the audio plugins that you want to activate. You can also just select Enable All. When you're done, click on Save and you're done. You might get a prompt to restart Resolve. Once you restart, all of your audio plugins will be available for you to use in both the Edit and Fairlight pages. Next, let's set up your audio hardware. In DaVinci Resolve, you have the ability to dictate both your audio output and input devices that you want the software to use. In most cases, this will just be whatever you have your system set to, but just in case you want to change that or in case it's not set up correctly, head back to your preferences, click on video and audio IO, and in the audio IO section, select your desired input and output devices. And while we're here, we'll configure our GPU. Now, this is more for people who bought the studio version and who have a dedicated GPU, but it's good to know just in case. See, in DaVinci Resolve, you have the ability to not only determine which GPU is used to process your footage, but also how much RAM should be allotted for both Resolve and Fusion memory. To set this, head to memory and GPU in your preferences, then in memory configuration, determine your resolve and fusion memory limits. Truth be told, I pretty much always keep these maxed out. Then in GPU configuration, select your GPU processing mode. For NVIDIA GPUs, use CUDA, and for anything else, use OpenCL. Then select the GPU you want to use. Most computers will only have one option here, but if you have more than one GPU, you can select up to two GPUs to use with Resolve. Next, we're going to set up autosave. Now, in DaVinci Resolve, you have the ability to save at any time by hitting Control S on your keyboard or by going to File Save. And that's all well and good, but but if you're anything like me, you have a tendency to get focused on an edit and completely forget to save. And then if for whatever reason DaVinci Resolve closes, you run the risk of losing your entire project. To help prevent this, head to your preferences, click on user, and then on project save and load. Then in save settings, select both the live save and project backups boxes. Then down in project backup location, select browse and choose where you want your backups to be stored. I tend to put them on the same drive as my project library, but best practices suggest putting them in a separate location just in case that drive dies. What can I say? I'm a daredevil. The last thing that we'll do in preferences is set up our online accounts. DaVinci Resolve has the ability to export directly to YouTube, Vimeo, Twitter, Dropbox, and Frame.io. All you have to do is click on system at the top of your preferences, then click on internet accounts. From there, simply click on sign in next to each account you want to be able to publish to. Follow the prompts in the browser window that pops up, and once you're done, click save in your preferences. Next, let's talk about out keyboard shortcuts. DaVinci Resolve, just like Filmora, has a bunch of keyboard shortcuts, but they're probably a little bit different from each other. Personally, I like DaVinci Resolve shortcuts because they're really optimized for a professional workflow. That being said, if you want to cut down on the learning curve of DaVinci Resolve, you can customize the keyboard shortcuts to match what you were using in Filmora. To do this, head up to the top left of your screen, select DaVinci Resolve and keyboard customization. From there, you can customize the keyboard shortcuts any way you want. All you have to do is find the action you want to change, select it, and then type in what you would like the keystroke to be instead. There is a search bar to help speed up the process, and if you're familiar with any other video editing software, DaVinci Resolve has keyboard presets for Premiere Pro, Final Cut, Avid, and Pro Tools. Once you're done changing the shortcuts to your liking, click Save, and you're done. Next, we're gonna set up our default render settings in the deliver page. Basically, export settings. We're creating export settings. First, head over to the deliver page. Now, you don't necessarily have to do this since DaVinci Resolve does have YouTube presets for both 1080, 2.5K, and 4K resolutions. That being said, I like having full control over my export settings. If you're the same, click on custom export in the top left of the deliver page, then put in the settings you want to use. Then in the top right of your render settings, click the three dots, select save as new preset, give the preset a name, 
and click save. And now with all of that done, you've set up DaVinci Resolve so that you can get right to editing your next project without having to tweak a bunch of settings or worry about losing your project. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. There are a lot of things to learn in DaVinci Resolve and I have a ton of videos on this channel to help you do just that. Plus, I've just brought back my weekly live streams. They're every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern. So feel free to pop in, say hi and ask me anything. Thing. Just don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And in the meantime, don't forget to go out there and make stuff. Thanks for watching.